Hey everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. In this video I will show you step by step how to create the futures grid bot on Qcoin. Now without further ado let's get right into it. The first thing you want to do is to go over to trade and then click on trading bot. Then you want to scroll down over to futures grid and click on create bot. You'll then see the AI parameters. However I recommend to go over to customize so you can customize all of these settings by yourself. Now the first thing you want to choose is the pair you're trading on or the pair the bot is running on. For me this will be BTC Perpetual slash USDT. Now once you have selected the right pair, you can then go ahead and choose whether you want to long or short trade. I will go ahead and click on short, and you'll then see the price range. You have the price range low and the price range high. Now the way I decide what my price range is, is to go over to tradingview.com, and then I go over to chart. You'll then be sent over to a page looking similar to this one, and you want to go over to this icon right here, and search for BTC USDT. You'll then see the BTC USDT perpetual contract, however the chart will be the same on any other so it doesn't really matter. Because as you can see, this is the BTC USDT perpetual contract on Bybit, but the BTC USDT chart on Qcoin will be exactly the same. So now you need to decide in which price range you want your bot to trade, the low and the high. Now there's three time frames I chart on. The one hour chart, the one day chart and the one week chart. If you're charting only one hour, your trade will most likely be a couple of hours to a few days. Charting only one day however, will lead to having a trade of a couple of days to maybe one week or a week and a half. And charting on the weekly time frame will lead to having trades up to a couple of months. Now with that being explained, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the hourly chart, and you can then see that at the stochastic RSI, Bitcoin is just dropping out of the oversold territory. Which means that based on the past, it's most likely gonna have a correction into the overbought territory, and there it will go back up again. So you can see that the Bitcoin price is going down and the stochastic RSI is also making a reset. Now I'm gonna zoom out and look for any areas of support or resistance. I like to go over to the arrow or the lines I mean, and you can then click on horizontal line. You can also click on Alt H to shortcut. So right here I see a line of support and resistance, right here I also see one, and to be honest I think this is pretty good. Now you have the low and the high. Which basically means that if the price goes below this price, your bot will stop shorting. And if the price goes above this one, your bot will stop shorting as well. Or of course, if you have the long enabled, it will stop longing. Now with that in mind, I just realized that I have short selected. Which basically means that this is not the trade setup I was looking for. And I should probably set my stop loss or the highest price right here. Now if you're not sure how to know where to place these lines, I will show you. You can see that the lowest line I have. As a touch point right here, functioning as a support, a support once again, a support, a support, and right here, it's not necessarily on the same price, but it comes really close, so it's still a support. So that's how I know that this line is a line of support. Now right here, you can see that my middle line functioned as a resistance. Two body wick candle touches, two body wick candle touches, and once again a wick touch. You can also see that it functioned as kind of a support right here, and then the price broke through and it didn't come back up. Now right here you can also see that the same line that functioned as a resistance right here, functioned as a support and a support right here. Now just for your knowledge, if a line of support or resistance gets broken, so the price goes through the line, it will function as the other side of it. So a support will function as a resistance and a resistance will function as a support, as you can see right here. It was a resistance, a resistance, and then it broke through and it functioned as a support. Now because I want to short Bitcoin, I'll go over to short right here. By the way, if you don't have this, you need to go over to this part right here, click on it and then click on either short or long position. Now when you place the short position, you can see that I myself would like to place my stop loss right here, a little bit above that, because I want my bot to get a little bit of wiggle space. And the optimal profits would even go down all the way here. So this is a risk reward ratio of closely 3. So now that you have the low and the high of your bot, you want to go over to Qcoin and fill them in. So the highest price I want my bot to trade at, is 48104. So the highest range is the 48104 and the low is right here which is 4549. Now this is my price range and the number of placed orders or also known as grids is a little harder to explain but I will go ahead and give it my best try. So let's say this is our maximum price and our lowest price. Now a grid is basically a line that is on every level. I'm not gonna make this chart very good looking I'm sorry for that but it's just for the example. Now in this case there's 15 grids. The lowest price, there's 13 in between and the highest price. 
Now what a grid is, is basically if the price as of right now is right here and it goes down, your bot will buy into the coin every grid it goes down. And when the grid goes up, or the price action goes up, I mean, the grid will be sold. So this grid right here will sell right here, this run will sell right here, and this one will sell right here. Now when it goes down, it will buy once again, because it's a bot and it can do that very, very consistent. And this is basically how you can optimize profits while holding a coin as well, which I think is really cool. Now if the price goes up higher than you ever bought your coin set, you might be like, how do I sell? Uh, you don't. It's pretty simple, your bot doesn't sell, so it's basically neutral. And then when the price goes back down, your bot will buy again. And if it goes up at any point once again, it will sell. So this is how the profits work. Now the grids, I just want to show this to you because it's important to understand what you're doing with your money. The grids are basically connected. This is a grid pair, this is a grid pair, this is a grid pair. And you can see that this one has not sold yet. A simple way to understand it is the grid you buy at will be sold one grid higher. You can also see that the first time you bought into this coin, in this example, would be sold right here. Even though I didn't make it red in your thoughts, this should be red. That's a mistake of mine, I'm sorry. And then these are the grid connections once again. Now I hope I explained the level of grids clearly to you. If not, let me know in the comments down below so I can explain it to you further. But this is basically how grids work. So if you decide to go with three grids, you have the highest price, one grid right here, and the lowest grid right here. If you decide to go with 100 grids, you will have this times 5, 6 or 7. So there will be a lot of trades going on. Now I myself like to set my bots on a higher grid interval. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the maximum. You can see that right here, the minimum is 2 grids and the maximum is 13 grids. It can go up to even 100 grids. However, because the price range isn't really large, it's pretty close, the amount of grids isn't as large as it could be. You can then see the interval in USDT. And you can see that when I go ahead with 13 grids, the interval is 200 USDT. And if I go with 3, for example, it's 817 USDT. So that's a pretty big difference. But like I explained, there will also be less trades going on if your grid interval is lower. Now right here, you can choose the leverage. So if you either want to leverage with a 1x, 2x, or up to 5x. For this example, I'll just be going with 2x, and you'll then have to fill in the investment margin. So that's the amount of money you would like to invest yourself without the leverage. So if I was to go ahead and go with 350, which at the moment I don't have in my margin account, however, because of the leverage, my 350 USDT will be traded on the market as 700 USDT. I myself also like to work with advanced settings. You can just click on it and then the stop price, take profit, and entry price will all pop up. I don't want to change the entry price, however, I would like to set a stop loss and a take profit. The stop price for me is right here. Please be aware that if you're longing, the stop price will be below the current market price and the take profit will be above the current market price. And if you're shorting, the stop loss will be above the current market price and the take profit below. So that's why the below one, so this blue line right here, is gonna be my take profit because as you guys can see, I'm shorting. And right here you can see that the lowest for me is 4, 5, I'm just gonna copy it. So that's the take profit and the stop price is right here. So this is how to set up your futures grid bot on Qcoin. If you've still got any questions at all, or if I didn't explain something clearly enough, ask me in the comments down below so I can help you out. If you found this video helpful, let me know by leaving a like or subscribing to my channel for more tutorials about cryptocurrencies.